In theory, the PD-26 appears to be a decisive step toward the future of Russian aviation, a next-generation engine urgently ordered from the highest levels. In reality, progress has been slow and uneven. Jet engines don't respond to political pressure, and modern aerospace industries cannot be restructured by order. This isn't a design flaw. It's constrained by materials production capacity and system-level shortcomings. So why can't Russia move faster? How exactly are these limitations holding the engine back? Let's take a closer look. The PD-26 is intended to be Russia's flagship high-thrust turbofan designed to power future wide-body airliners and heavy military transports such as the IL-96-400M. In strategic terms, it is meant to anchor Moscow's effort to reduce dependence on Western aerospace giants like Boeing and Airbus, particularly as sanctions have sharply restricted access to imported engines components and maintenance support. More than a single engine program, the engine is positioned as a critical pillar of Russia's attempt to preserve a sovereign wide-body aviation capability. Technically, it represents a deliberate course correction. It emerges as an evolutionary successor to the PD-14 Russia's most successful modern medium-thrust engine, while avoiding the pitfalls that undermine the far more ambitious PD-35. That earlier super-heavy program aimed for extreme thrust levels, but collapsed under escalating complexity, soaring costs, and the absence of committed aircraft platforms, the engine survives by dialing expectations back to a more achievable 26-ton thrust class, while still inheriting key technologies developed along the way, including composite fan blades, high-efficiency compressor stages, and advanced high-temperature materials. On paper, this makes it not only realistically plausible, but also symbolically powerful, a realistic pathway toward an indigenous wide-body engine. That symbolism was reinforced in September 2025, when President Vladimir Putin personally elevated the PD-26 to a fast-track national priority. The directive called for accelerated development, intensive ground testing, and rapid transition into serial production to revitalize the domestic aviation ecosystem across both civilian and military sectors. Officials frame the engine as the first truly native Russian wide-body power plant, promising compressed timelines and certification targets as early as 2027. Yet the gap between ambition and reality remains stark. Despite the political urgency, the program is still stuck in the pre-prototype design phase. There is no flying testbed, no finalized certification roadmap, and no reliable domestic replacements for more than 40 critical components imported from abroad. These challenges are compounded by deeper structural weaknesses, including the ongoing brain drain of experienced engineers, fragmented supply chains under sanctions, aging manufacturing infrastructure, and a lack of firm aircraft orders that would justify large-scale investment. As a result, the turbofan has become more than just a delayed engine. It now serves as a case study in the fragility of Russia's wider aviation sector, where setbacks in one program threaten to ripple outward from engine development to airframe production, putting the entire ecosystem under mounting strain. If you find this level of in-depth analysis helpful in understanding why programs succeed or fail, please like and subscribe. Thank you. The PD-26 engine represents Russia's most calculated and most precarious attempt at aviation independence. It is not a clean sheet breakthrough, but a deliberately scaled down derivative of the far more ambitious PD-35 super heavy turbofan. In theory, this should reduce risk by reusing technologies already under development. In practice, it has created a dangerous dependency. The PD-26 inherits the PD-35's core architecture from advanced multi-stage high-pressure compressors and single crystal turbine blades rated above 1,800 degrees Celsius to ceramic matrix composites, additive manufactured cooling components, and large composite fan systems designed for very high bypass ratios. All of these technologies were meant to be proven first on the PD-35 
through extended ground testing flight test beds and years of operational validation. That validation has not occurred. The PD-35 remains stalled with no real-world data on long-term reliability under thermal cycling vibration, foreign object damage, and high cycle fatigue. As a result, this program is being pushed forward without the empirical foundation its design depends. This creates a structural choke point. Political pressure to fast-track the PD-26 toward prototyping and serial production following President Putin's September 2025 directive cannot bypass unresolved PD-35 constraints. Sanctions still limit access to ultra-high temperature alloys and coatings. Domestic supply chains for forgings, electronics, and control systems remain fragmented. And there is still no operational data on maintenance costs, overhaul intervals, or failure rates. Metrics no laboratory simulation can fully replace. Because the two engines share so much common technology, any flaw discovered later in the PD-35 core would propagate directly into the PD-26, multiplying risk, cost, and delay across both programs. In effect, Russia is trying to field a derivative engine before mastering the parent technology. This is not an engineering shortcut, but a sequencing error, one that threatens to cascade across military transports like the IL-96-400M and any future civilian widebody ambitions built on the same fragile foundation. Russia's engine is constrained not by ambition, but by the unforgiving material and supply chain realities that every wide-body turbofan must ultimately master. At its core are nickel-based superalloys that must survive turbine inlet temperatures without succumbing to creep oxidation or microstructural collapse. That demands directionally solidified and single crystal turbine blades grown under tightly controlled conditions to maximize thermal fatigue life alongside ceramic matrix composites, such as silicon carbide reinforced CMCs that can reduce component weight by 30 to 50 percent while enduring the brutal environment of the hot section. These are exactly the domains where Russia faces its deepest vulnerabilities. Western sanctions have severed access to critical enablers, ultra-precise machining systems capable of micron-level tolerances, advanced PVD and electron beam PVD equipment required to apply modern thermal barrier coatings and fully integrated supply chains linking rare earth elements, specialty forgings, and quality-controlled powder metallurgy. For decades, these ecosystems were shaped through collaboration with firms like MTU, Rolls-Royce, Pratt and & Whitney, and Honeywell, partnerships that no longer exist. In response, Russia has been forced toward rapid domestic substitution, relying on improvised analogs and early-stage materials programs that lack deep operational validation. Lab-scale CMCs and derivative alloys may function on test rigs, but they have not accumulated the thousands of flight hours needed to expose long-term degradation modes. By contrast, engines like the GE9X or Trent XWB are not the product of a single breakthrough, but of three to four decades of iterative refinement. Incremental alloy evolution, repeated design failures, military and civilian cross-pollination, and supply chains hardened by scale. Jet engines are not simply engineered. They are cultivated over generations through relentless empirical feedback. Compressing that process into a single sanctions isolated decade does not accelerate progress. It amplifies fragility. And for the PD-26, that fragility threatens to define not just the engine itself, but the credibility of Russia's entire wide-body aviation revival. Russia's program exposes a deep structural mismatch in the country's aviation strategy. Moscow is racing to develop a high-thrust wide-body engine for airliners and heavy transports like the IL-96-400M, yet no modern airframe exists that is ready to use it. This flips the proven Western model on its head. Airbus and Boeing first lock in mature aircraft platforms, the A350 or 777X, 
then refine engines like the Trent XWB or GE 9X through tight real-world co-development, feeding thousands of flight hours back into propulsion, tuning noise control and fuel efficiency. Russia has done the opposite. The turbofan is being pushed forward without a next-generation widebody in production, no IL-96 successor, and no CR-929 equivalent close to readiness. Despite President Putin's fast-track directive in September 2025, the engine remains effectively orphaned, no airline launch customer to enforce deadlines, no revenue service data to reveal vibration issues or durability flaws, and no market pressure to punish delays. This chicken and egg paralysis slows everything. Without an airplane to power, the PD-26 lacks a deadline that truly hurts. Developers face bureaucracy, not bankruptcy. And as domestic fleets cling to aging PS-90, while imports fade away, Russia's vision of engine self-reliance risks remaining exactly that. A grounded idea never forced to prove itself in the air. Russia's PD-26 program is now facing a far more realistic timeline. Ground testing is unlikely before 2027 or 2028, with any meaningful serial production slipping into the early 2030s. That delay is not accidental. It reflects hard constraints, unresolved dependencies on PD-35 technologies, sanctions choked supply chains for super alloys and coatings and most critically the absence of a modern wide body airframe to anchor integration testing and certification in the near term the engine's only viable path forward is military service re-engining il-96 400m strategic transports for the russian air force could provide precious flight hours vibration data and hot section endurance validation under less demanding military standards. That slow iterative exposure would de-risk the engine in ways no test cell can. Meanwhile, civilian operators are likely stuck stretching the life of PS90A engines, relying on limited foreign support, where sanctions allow and operating a shrinking IL-96 fleet of fewer than 30 aircraft. Without synchronized airframe investment committed launch customers like Aeroflot or meaningful industrial offsets from partners such as China, Russia's civilian wide-body ambitions remain constrained to marginal upgrades rather than true next-generation aircraft. Short-haul programs like the MC-21 can scale modestly with the PD-14, but the long-range gap persists. This is not failure, it is forced evolution. Backed by sustained state funding and phased military proving grounds, the PD-26 may follow the same decade-long maturation path as the PD-14. But engines are not built by ambition alone. Jet engines demand decades of material refinement, ecosystem stability, airframe symbiosis, and market pressure. No decree can compress that process. Competence is earned one test cycle, one failure, and one hard lesson at a time. In your opinion, is PD-26 on the right track in the long term? Or is it simply the consequence of a strategy forced by circumstances? Please share your views in the comments below. Have a safe flight. Goodbye, and see you again.